Over the last two months, Joburg, the country and the world have seen the removal of the Speaker of Council, Councillor Vasco da Gama, in a process that was characterized by very serious allegations of vote buying, which were reported to the South African Police Services for investigation. That was followed by the election of a Speaker, who with every sitting collapses the integrity and functioning of the legislative arm of Council solely to meet narrow and underhanded goals. We saw this program of underhandedness play out when the multi-party government was removed through a series of illegal acts that were corrected by the High Court. We must remember that politics is a legally regulated space and we must always, as lawmakers, never lose sight of this, otherwise we would be advocating for anarchy. While we've staved off another motion of no confidence, which fails to take off due to its illegal um, nature or illegal inadmissibility before council, we are aware that another such motion is already being cooked up. Members of the media, the data shows that we were beginning to repair Johannesburg. Residents have shared their experiences of the rebuilding of Joburg, and indeed the city was starting to gradually look and feel better. The multi-party government is not claiming to have done a perfect job, but we had only just begun. With that said, in less than 30 days that the illegally elected government was in office, we began to see and hear of the tearing down, bit by bit, of the foundations and structures of good governance and the effects thereof that we had established. Faced with the water crisis and short on ideas, the response from the illegally installed corrupt collective was to lay blame on our residents, with the solution being putting a JoJo tank in every household. Years and years of corruption and the collapse of economic and critical infrastructure cannot be fixed with weak and unbudgeted programs. The already set out budget of the multi-party government has allocated 795 million rands to water supply infrastructure and an additional 600 million rands for sanitation infrastructure. Many of these projects are on the go and we will see completion between 2023 and 2024. Some storage and distribution projects were delayed because the scope of the projects had to change in order to accommodate the inclusion of backup power generation. Jobak Water has made steady progress in replacing Johannesburg's old sewage and water piping infrastructure, as well as completing road reinstatements following emergency and scheduled maintenance. In the final quarter of 2021-22 financial year, over 100 kilometers of water piping and just under 70 kilometers of sewage piping was replaced against the targets of 26 and 15 kilometers respectively. This equates to 385% and 467% of overachievements of the targets. Joburg Water is making serious progress in replacing aging water infrastructure in Johannesburg. These developments from May to July this year have aided Joburg Water in providing over 3,000 more households in Johannesburg with basic water services and securing 12% drop in sewage blockages within the entire system for that period. Residents of Johannesburg, rolling blackouts have tragically become part and parcel of everyday life with deep and negative effects on the economy and on our way of living. We're therefore excited to announce that following the May 2022 Johannesburg Energy in Daba, City Power is on track with its alternative energy procurement program as per the Energy in Daba resolutions and we will publish the first request for proposals for short-term supply, that's three-year supply, from the private sector by mid-November. We are ready to start seeing the back of rolling blackouts so that we can get the economic capital of South Africa working again. Further to this, the multi-party government through City Power has partnered with the National Department of Mineral Resources and Energy to procure 15,000 solar water geysers at no cost. City Power will develop the criteria for the beneficiaries who need them the most, such as orphanages, hospices, old age homes and animal shelters. The implementation of the solar geyser project creates an opportunity for DMRE to train city power technicians, community-based electricians, and SMEs. We will ensure that these opportunities are offered to the communities where these solar water geysers will be installed. Members of the media, 
Much was said about the finances of the city, because of course, this is where the attention of the corrupt is focused. There was little to no truth about what was said, in the main because the figures were unaudited. We have nothing to hide because the auditor figures will be presented before council as per legislation. What was of concern was how nonchalant Councillor Dada Moreira was about the delayed 2 billion rand short-term loan from the DBSA. The report of which was supposed to serve at the last council meeting but was blocked and has been kicked further down the road due to the cancellation of today's extraordinary meeting of council. It shows that the ANC is willing to collapse the city in order to grab power. While finances are not in the best position, we're taking active steps to rectify this. So this notion that there is anxiety about the payment of salaries is a fabrication and that we cannot meet our financial obligations is a lie. Notably, we're one of the few municipalities across the country that does not owe ESCOM or Rand Water. In the coming days, we'll give a full account of the state of the city's finances as they stand. Ladies and gentlemen, the Joburg multi-party government was beginning to see a change in the operations and culture of the JMPD, which was translating into better policing. We also began to see a decrease in crime in the inner city, especially around the High Court precinct. But sadly, these operations were fractured during the Morera era. In fact, just this week, a member of the legal fraternity contacted my office to relay how matters have regressed. I'm pleased to state that JMPD resources are now once again being reorganized to give effect to their policing mandate and our priority of building a safe and secure city. Furthermore, we will continue deploying JMPD officers and resources back to the regions so that our limited policing resources have coverage across the city equitably and strategically. This is a snapshot of our golden repair and rebuild of Joburg, which is far from complete. And indeed, our city is broken, but the women and men seated here and the fellow MMCs are the best shot at us making Joburg a city that we can all be proud of. We have anecdotal and documented evidence that the ANC's only ploy is to corrupt, capture and collapse the city of Johannesburg. And if they get their keys to the city, the bank accounts will be emptied like never before. This has never been a fight for positions, but a fight for and with residents, a fight for the rule of law and a fight for the survival of Johannesburg. Thank you very much. Um, we will now take your questions. Thank you, Madam Executive. Mayor, colleagues, uh, you know the drill. State who you are, where you're from, and your question is directed at. Uh, we'll take questions in groups of three. Uh, Mayor, from Business Day. Uh, Mayor, the NC has said that we'll be out of office before the end of November. What's your response to that? You have the numbers in your corner. And uh, what would your your removal, you know, mean for the city of Johannesburg and for cities to deliver at large? Thank you. Next end. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks very much, Muluko Muloto from ENC AMM. You alluded to the media briefing by the ANC yesterday, which was largely around the finances of the city. And you also are saying that uh, your finances are not in the best position. Give us a picture, as much as you're saying that you, there would still be a need for an audit, but surely you're, you have the executive authority presiding over this uh, executive of, of this city. You should know definitely what the status is, whether the ANC is wrong when they say you are basically on the brink of bankruptcy. But also they raised another point to say that a, a, a conditional grant, I think uh, just over 740 million rand. Part of it, around 430, was apparently meant to expand the Ravaya bus system. Another part was supposed to create job opportunities in Johannesburg. That money was unspent and the National Treasury took it back. Why, um, if that is true? I think we'll pause there and then we'll come back and take another round. Maria. Thank you very much. I'll take the first questions and MC Salvi will handle the financial questions. Um, the question about numbers, um, you know, I've, 
I've always said and I still repeat that we engaged in a legal battle and we've won the legal battle and that's why we got reinstated. We're now engaged in a political battle and it's an ongoing battle. We all know that a motion of no confidence was meant to be tabled today, unfortunately, again, illegally. And, um, and following uh, lawyers writing to the speaker's lawyers, they then decided to withdraw that motion. It has since been withdrawn. We also know that there's plans to bring another motion. We don't know when that will happen and we will deal with that when that happens. In the background, we continue to negotiate politically to strengthen the Joburg multi-party government, which is the only government we believe can take the city forward. In terms of what all of this means for service delivery and for residents, instability is never good for growth, particularly in a city like Johannesburg that's broken and in dire need of attention and fixing and something that the, the multi-party government was on top of. We are working hard to stabilize our government so that we can continue offering uninterrupted services to our residents and giving them the kind of certainty they need that indeed the city will be rebuilt and, and, and that we will recover. MMC Sarabi will speak to, to the city's finances, but as I alluded in my statement earlier, we are planning to give a full report on the city's finances, but she will just give you a high level overview of what has happened um, to date and where we are now, just at a high level. And, and what the biggest challenge we're faced with actually now is, which is the speaker who is overreaching and blocking the work of the executive, MMC Sarabi. Thank you very much, EM, and uh, good day to all the media and to the residents of Johannesburg. Um, the finances of the city at the moment are subject to a cash flow challenge, and as has been stated in council very often in the last nine to ten months, is that um, between July 2021 and December 2021, which was the first half of the financial year, 20 to 21, cash out of the city's coffers hemorrhaged to the tune of 2.7 billion rand. Gone. So in July, the cash balance was 6.6 .6 billion rand, and in December, it was 3.9. 2.7 billion rand out of the bank. Under this multi-party government between January and June 2022, a further 100 million rand dissipated out of the out of the bank account. 27 times less than the previous six months under the previous government, which was not this multi-party government. So cash flow at the moment is an issue and the development map of South Africa loan that was being prepared to serve before council before the illegal coup that took place at the end of September is a 2 billion rand short term loan so it does not affect uh, future generations and would be will, will have to be repaid by the end of june 2023 so it's just a short-term loan just to cover the 2.7 billion rand that hemorrhaged out of the bank account in the first half of the previous financial year um, i'm sure for for those of us who earn normal salaries and have normal bank accounts that 2.7 billion rand is not pocket change. It is an enormous amount of money. And to expect the residents of Johannesburg to be overpaying a, a, their commitments to cover that 2.7 billion rand that was lost is unreasonable. And that is why we have approached the Development Bank of South Africa for a loan to cut for 2 billion rand. The Speaker of Council has four times got in the way and obstructed that report serving in Council and we cannot approach DBSA until that report is approved in council. So it was supposed to have sat today and instead of um, the speaker being economical and uh, transmuting today's physical council meeting to an online meeting to serve so that that report could serve, um, she has cancelled council entirely in its entirety uh, for today and 
The next council meeting can only take place within three days because that is the, the um, what the, the law prescribes and our standard rules of council. 72 hours notice is required. And so the longer that the speaker delays allowing this report to serve in council, the tougher the situation is going to be on a daily basis. But as the mayor has alluded to, we are going to be presenting a state of the finances of the city of Johannesburg address. It will be, at the moment we're looking at Wednesday next week, you will get sufficient media advice notice of the venue and the time on Wednesday. And we will present to you, to the residents of Johannesburg, where we've come from, where we are, and what our plans are going forward. With respect to the grant funding that um, has been returned to uh, the grants that have, have been returned, that is because the city manager post was not filled and because the CFO position was not filled. Those are legal requirements for the rollover of grant funding and the city of Johannesburg did not have those positions filled at that time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ian. Bye. Um, Melissa Tani from Newsroom Africa. Um, they, of course, you've alluded to this already in terms of the motion, uh, Mayor. Um, what, you know, do you plan on challenging uh, this motion? You know, is there a way uh, for you to challenge this motion again? Because the previous one, uh, we understand that because of court processes. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it cannot be brought again to the house. So, what is your take on the fresh uh, new motion? Um, yeah, going forward, they also accused you, um, the ANC, saying that um, you are not in control um, of, you know, the DA uh, in council, and they're even saying that uh, you are ready to jump ship, and that's why you're working with Herman Mashaba uh, to join Action SA. What is your response to those allegations? Thank you. Uh, let me start at the back here. Yeah. Um, morning, uh, Alpha from Eyewitness News. Um, last week's vote of uh, Section 79 chairpersons um, it kind of showed us that uh, your multi party coalition might not have the numbers to keep you in office. Um, do you have any progress with that? Are you, are, you, are you reclaiming your numbers in council? Perhaps solidify your, your position as mayor in, in, in council? And how do you feel about the speaker's remarks about you? and um, the city in general. I mean, do you not fear that she's a little bit too impartial um, to serve as speaker of the city? And uh, how do you think that will affect um, the DA and the multi-party coalition? Do you have reference to specific remarks from the speaker? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. All right, thanks. Let me start with you, MMC. You, you, you seem to be blaming the fact that uh, funding, were, funding was not uh, conditional grants were not spent on the fact that the CFO and the city manager were not appointed. Who, who, who must take the blame? Because these are two people who must be appointed by council. And surely you as politicians failed in that regard. Um, with regard to the cash flow challenges that you say persist, is the situation at a point where you may not even pay salaries. What, 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 what is the time frame if you don't get that particular short-term loan of two billion rand? Where will things really go south? Um, yesterday, Executive Mayor, the ANC accused you of delaying submission of Section 71 reports to council. <coughs> uh, how do you defend yourself? Because surely that, that's legislated. You must account to council. But your budget, I mean, the, 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 the financial year started in July. You are already in financial trouble. It's your, your budget funded. I mean, it's, it's hardly six months into this financial year. Is your budget funded? Has the National Treasury ticked all the boxes to say we are happy with it? We'll pause there and we'll start the last round with you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, again, I'll take the, most of the questions and I'll leave the financial questions to MMC. 
Do I plan on challenging the motion? If a motion is brought to council legally, observes the laws of this country, the rules of council, there's no need to challenge it because democracy allows for a motion to be tabled. The only reason we challenged this motion is because it was done illegally. It was brought to council illegally and everything proceeding, even its taming in council was illegal. Now, how do we challenge it? We challenge it politically in council and that's well within our rights. Um, democratically to challenge it in council and I've spoken again um, to the, the, the issue around numbers that we are busy in negotiations both at a national level and at a local level to see how we stave off the next motion of no confidence when it's brought to council. Um, not in control of the DA in council. I'm not sure where that comes from. I'm not even sure how to respond to that. Our caucus is quite coherent. Um, we are one caucus, 71 members strong, and we've shown it through and through with every vote in council. We've been together. Uh, there's been no 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 um, divisions within our caucus. Um, caucus is is a a unit of 71 individuals. We debate issues, we don't always agree on issues, and that's good because we, because that's democracy. Again, democracy must play out, even at a caucus level. Um, this is not a dictatorship. So so there will be people in the caucus who don't agree on certain things, but that's good. We debate and, and, and we see if we can persuade each other, and in the end, caucus makes a decision, and we all align with the decision of the caucus. So no, I don't think there's any truth to that, and I'm not sure where that comes from. In, in terms of the speaker being impartial, you're absolutely right. In fact, we are very concerned. And over and above her being impartial or, 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 or not being impartial, we're concerned about her overreach and her now blocking the work of the executive. We're seeing executive reports being blocked from, from, from being tabled in council by the speaker. We wanted to table urgency reports and the DBSA loan was one of them. And she simply said unilaterally she, that it's not urgent. It's not urgent and, and so it, it can't serve. And we had hoped that it would serve today. We saw yesterday she decided to postpone the meeting. She doesn't even say when it's going to sit, you know, she simply refuses. We've submitted motivations trying to show how urgent and important this is. And she simply refuses to see reason. And she's, in fact, usurping the powers of the executive. It's a big problem and we are dealing with it. And we'll communicate further on that as time goes on. So it's a big, big problem and it will impact on service delivery if she continues in this manner. Um, Okay, and the, the MMC will deal with the financial issues, but MMC, I just wanted to assist a bit on the unspent grants and, mm. you know, the, the, the CM, CFO recruitment, which, which I would have been involved in the, the city manager recruitment process as an example. I think it was widely publicized um, as being a coalition of nine political parties. Um, it, it was a highly contentious issue. And yes, unfortunately, we ended up having to concede to restart the process in order to, to, to stabilize the coalition and government going forward. Unfortunately, then it meant the rollover, and that's what MNC was alluding to. The rollover could not happen because at that time of the rollover, we needed to have had a, 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 a substantive city manager and CFO. The CFO resigned. Nobody saw it coming, and not even MNC anticipated his resignation. And he literally resigned a few weeks, I think, before end of July, end of July just before um, um, the, the rollover time kicked in. So that, that nobody could have anticipated. It's his right to resign. We couldn't force him to stay, but we then um, were faced with that sort of challenge um, and, 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 and that's why it couldn't be rolled over but it needs to be borne in mind that we came in mid financial year so if there were inefficiencies in the first half of the financial year with, it, it's, pos it's very possible that you can't spend in the second half of the financial year while you're still troubleshooting and diagnosing where those inefficiencies were the good news is that we've got now um, assistance in place for this current financial year and that's why we can't afford to lose any more time mm. because we're running on a very tight program a very tight project management plan and it's important that we ensure that spending does happen we can't afford to lose free money um, we need more money but the free money that we have must be spent and we've been working very closely with national treasury to look at where the gaps have been in the city and they've, they've really um, um, ha held our hand to help us see how we can spend what we have but also bring in more money that we've not been accessing in the past and over to MMC to okay. deal with the rest Thank of the questions.
Okay, with the technical details on the short-term loan and uh, the, the specifics on the finances of the city, I again say we're going to give those details next week on Wednesday, so please come for that report. With respect to the Section 71 re report, in the history of the Section 71 report, these reports have always served late in council. Always. Uh, when I was attending my very first investor roadshow in the beginning of this year, it was a comment that was made by our potential investors and a question that was asked that why are these Section 71 reports, why, do they, why are they published on the website later than any of the other municipalities. So I've been working on that very closely with the department that produces those Section 71 reports. The Financial position of the city is submitted to the province per legislation within 10 days of the end of the month. That is what legislation states and that does happen. Province then looks at the figures, verifies the figures and may or may not send back information that is marginally different. And so the report as we see it in its paper form, in its document form, is then finalised after the return from province. So before October, the May and June Section 71 reports were ready to serve before the mayoral committee. The interim government in October only sat once and that was on the 26th of October and that meeting was interrupted by the court judgment at that meeting, it had been decided that the May and June Section 71 reports would not serve in the next council meeting because those MMCs wanted to have a look at them and wanted to sign them off themselves. They had already been signed off by me. The court judgment overturned uh, that interim government and on Wednesday, our multi-party government had a MACOM meeting and those two reports were inserted onto the council agenda and they have served. So we are now sitting at um, mm -hmm. November. We are having a mayoral committee tomorrow and July, August and September, no, no, July and August section 71 reports will serve in MACOM tomorrow and they will be ready for submission to council at the end of November and we are having another MACOM in the middle of November and September's Section 71 report will serve then and then September Section 71 report will serve in November's council and for the first time in the history of Section 71 reports a report will serve within a reasonable time limit in that September's report which will only be ready at the end of October because of the timings and then the next available council for it to serve is November and that will be the first time in the history of Johannesburg section 71 reports that those reports will serve on time. All section 71 reports for the whole of the previous year have now served in council and if anybody is ever to be blamed or to upon whose shoulders must sit the exclusion and the hiding of reports from council, it is our current speaker who is blocking reports from serving. But this executive, this multi-party government has not denied residents any of the information to which they, for, for, uh, to which they have access. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, MMC. Before we start the last round, I just want to give <coughs> MMC Sun an opportunity to touch on a few issues because, of course, he's in charge of some of the frontline uh, service delivery programs, water, lights, and refuse, and the impact that some of the decisions that have been made by the Speaker and the legally installed MMC government have had on uh, his space. Thank you, MMC Sun. Thank, thank you, Mabina. Good morning, Executive Mayor MMC Surabi. Uh, media. I, I thought I was being neglected today, um, but I can show you that's not what we're doing to service delivery. Um, 
As soon as the court judgment ruling came out, you know, our main court meeting, we went right back to work. And the unfortunate thing that uh, we had to do was stock take to say what happened in that vacuum period. Um, in a way, nothing much was done um, other than to say that um, uh, the water crisis will be resolved by, by drilling boreholes in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, we see this to and fro of blaming residents that uh, they must use water sparingly. They are using too much water because of the hot weather. So, so the water issue was, um, you know, placed at the doorsteps of our residents, which was extremely unfair. Um, what the man and I then did was that we immediately then took on the um, uh, understanding the problem. So, uh, to fast forward things, uh, I don't want to repeat what you've known already. Of course, you know what the residents know already. Uh, Rainwater uplifted the, its water restrictions, which is a positive uh, news for us. But uh, we maintain that. Um, we need to continue to offer our assistance and cooperation both in terms of Joburg Waters technical teams to say that uh, we understand there are certain challenges, certain issues. Uh, City Power has certainly identified uh, issues within rainwater that they can assist. One of um, the examples that was brought to my attention when I had my meeting with uh, City Power was that uh, when there was a power surge of one millisecond, that caused the uh, Aikenhof pump station to go down for four hours. So, so if we were told that, that there is no challenges in rainwater, we certainly need to look at the situation again. But we remain the position that we we'll go into rainwater with their permission to say that we have to assist. We have to assist you to reprogram your infrastructure. And at the same time, we will continue to monitor that Joburg residents don't have to go through that crisis again. And uh, if we ever have to come across those challenges in terms of water shortage, we have a proper backup emergency plan to go with that. Um, but I also want to bring you some positive news. Um, City Power hasn't stopped running because um, there was a bit of a, a, a speed bump in terms of uh, running government. Uh, they've uh, forged ahead of what that we want them to do that is to bring uninterrupted power supply to the city of Johannesburg. And in many fronts, one of the very positive news is that uh, through our engagement with the Department of Mineral Energy and Resources, they've uh, agreed to um, provide, as the mayor said, 15,000 units of solar water geysers at no cost to the city of Joburg. That's the first batch. And as soon as that letter of commitment is received from DMRE, the mayor and myself will be jumping onto a truck to go fetch those uh, solar water geysers. Um, we are busy with, a, busy with a, a blueprint as to who will be the beneficiaries. But we believe that um, organizations such as your old age homes, orphanages, hospices, animal shelters, where they are really in need of those water solar geysers, that we, are, um, we prioritize them. And of course, you know, those residents are in the communities such as Alorado Park and other areas, Orange Farm, Soweto, will also receive attention. But even better is that uh, we don't want to end there just simply by installing a, a solar water geyser. We want to extend the opportunities further to say that we will, together with DMR, be training those members of the community, SMMEs, so that they can continue with the second and third phase of uh, the project. Another very exciting project is the high uh, mass solar lighting. A lot of the areas, uh, again, you know, areas like Soweto where there are money supplied by ESCOM, when there's uh, load shedding, they're plunged into darkness and crime increases. Uh, what we will be doing is that uh, we have now finalized the tender for the high mass solar lighting. We will very soon be rolling the installation out in December. So our residents in those areas will then no longer be dependent on electricity supply for lighting in the public area, especially at night. And we're hoping that through this project that we improve the safety in the city of Johannesburg. And another issue, uh, residents, we don't hide those things from, from our, our public, that uh, Pick It Up announced this morning that um, there may be uh, uh, impacts in terms of refuse collection due to the fleet contract. Um, one of the items that uh, was supposed to serve in council, but it was blocked by the uh, speaker, was the fleet contract. So when we say to the residents that, uh, you know, the fleet contract item that is serving council does not make much of a sense because 
when you talk about fleet, you know, who does it impact? Well, one of the things that it does impact now is the collection of refuse because our pick it up trucks are dependent on those uh, fleet contracts. But uh, we didn't again stop and say, you know, there's nothing we can do because we couldn't go to council. We're finding ways to rectify it. Um, as uh, I'm speaking now, the team at Pick It Up in my office, we're busy working out ways that uh, we can minimize the impact and surely we want to now bring that situation into normality. Uh, Ian, there's um, one last thing I want to mention, is that uh, pursuant to our, our energy in Daba, that you all remember we said so much about, but uh, we, we really can't say that we embrace green and renewable energy unless we go out ourselves as a city of Johannesburg to say this is what we're doing to our facilities. So the uh, city power headquarters in Reuven will be installing solar panels on its rooftops to say that we want to save energy and the energy that we save will be fed back into the grid for our residents to use. And again, another very positive uh, news is that we've now partnered with uh, Joburg Markets. We will be installing solar panels on their rooftops to say that uh, you should also save some energy and the energy again we save will be fed through into our grid for the, uh, the, the, the residents that in need and uh, we certainly will be rolling this out to many of our uh, internal uh, entities and uh, facilities to say that uh, when we say we want to be greener, we want to be uh, renewable in terms of energy usage, we are there not just saying it, we're actually doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, last round, yes, madam. All right, uh, Mayor Katia from Sohoto from Kaya FM. Um, we do know that uh, the Morero was in office for 25 days. Um, you do, you have cited that there was either damage done or just a lack of uh, implementation or work being done during that time. Are you able to quantify or summarize very briefly? When you stepped back, what exactly did you find? And is it fair to uh, require that in 25 days, some of those matters that you were faced with or that you uh, observed could have been dealt with within that time? Thank you. So, Alex? Uh, thank you, Alex Patrick from News 24. MMC Sun, uh, as you mentioned, Randwater have said that we've had some good rains and now everything's fine, no more water restrictions, but I mean, surely a few good rains it doesn't really fix any of the issues. I mean, should, should we not still kind of hold on to a few water restrictions, um, fix some of the systems? Uh, you've, you've said there are some issues that maybe uh, the city can help them with. Uh, are those negotiations still uh, happening now that, you know, everything seems to be fixed and fine? Thank you. Okay, mine also, uh, MNC Sands, about um, the, the challenges and pick it up. I know my, my bean was not collected yesterday. <laughs> when, when will we see things back to what, what measures are you putting in place to ensure that, you know, the services is back to, to, to what it's supposed to do? What exactly is it that is frustrating the, 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 the flow of, uh, of the service? Yes, sir, the back. Uh, my name is Mujishu from House Tech Media House. Uh, my question to the mayor, uh, I would like to know how is or was the uh, relationship or the status of the relationship between the office of the mayor and the South African Cities Network, especially on issues regarding the integrated uh, urban development framework? Yes, sir. Um, it's just a small follow-up question for MMC San, mm -hmm. um, and perhaps I've missed it. Um, I see that um, City Power has partnered with the Mineral Resources Department for the procurement of solar water users. Um, is there perhaps a deadline that you know when will this be completed? Um, I'm not sure if you've mentioned it. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, one <coughs> please. <coughs> oh, okay. I, I have questions. Can I, <laughs> can I just ask? I, I don't want to let go, MMC, on this uh, unspent money that had to be returned to the uh, treasury. You did point out that you actually came in mid-financial uh, year. Um, but I want to know, when you got into office, how much did you spend of the total grant that was there? Could it be that when you got into office, you also failed completely? Or are you attributing that failure to the 
previous government that was there for the first half of the financial year. The, 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 the other question on the short-term loan and also on the contracts, the fleet contract, where 4,000 vehicles or so, according to the statement by Councillor uh, Nord, would basically the service provider will take them and service provision, the cleaning of the city would collapse. And you seem to be blaming this on the current speaker, whom you say is blocking the tabling of those two reports in council. Surely you should have anticipated. When did you realize? Because not very long ago, the speaker was Councillor Dagama. You would not have had those problems. When did you realize that you're going to have a problem there? with regard to the finances. Surely, I, I would be shocked if you realized this two weeks ago. Uh, why did you not anticipate that in the medium term there would be no table those reports when Councillor Dagama the speaker? Last question uh, for you, Executive Mayor. The ANC yesterday was clear that you actually took part in the awarding of the contract to a company which the former executive mayor, Herman Mashaba, was once chairperson of. And that company was given an 11 million rent contract. And it was not in the panel of service providers in the city. It was just handpicked. At the time, you were still the MMC for help. And they are saying you, you had a hand there. Tell us what your role was because surely that contract, the public protector found that it was wrong for, for that company to get that contract in that manner. And we know Mr. Mashaba is now in the courts. What was your role, man? we close it there, Madam Thank you so much. Um, I will summarize um, for you just some of our findings. Um, there's quite a lot, and I spent time on Tuesday with all the MMCs after having spent a week in our various portfolios just to get a sense of what else they found. But in a nutshell, there was a lot of blocking and stopping of service delivery and processes that were unfolding that were supposed to be left to unfold. Um, you would have noticed that in housing and transport, you had MMCs issuing directives for all, all procurement processes to stop. And that will have an impact on service delivery. Um, recruitment was stopped. We've got a, a few critical senior management positions that were meant to be filled, including the city manager position. And there was no movement in the 25 days that we were out of office. The boards of entities were told to stop operating and, and, and the Dada Marera administration was getting ready to actually advertise for new boards of entities. Now these boards were brought in at the beginning of this year and they hadn't even been a year in office. And these boards are boards that are made up of experts in, in different fields across the different entities of the city. And the, the appointment was completely apolitical and they've been doing a fantastic job of undoing a lot of the corruption and maladministration that's been happening and driving our entities down. And, and the first thing the NC wanted to do was get rid of them because they were going to block their agenda to, to, to once again entrench corruption in the system. So those are just some of the um, the, the high level examples but if you go into specific areas you'll find in JPC for instance where the board was was about to charge the CEO for for various counts of corruption uh, they were told to stop that process and now we've reinstated our boards and that process will continue so there's there were just there was just so much injustice um, in the system things that even our residents aren't aware of and, and we can give more detail with time um, let me move on to to some of the other questions and give over to the MMCs to respond um, my office's relationship in terms of integrated urban development the the custodian of integrated urban development in the city is development planning um, so yes, the, any any stakeholders would interface directly with the planning department. As you know, MMC Belinda H. Zujoku is responsible for that. And uh, we now have a, a new ED, very capable, we're very excited. We're seeing some um, great developments going forward. We're seeing our precinct development also um, going ahead after it was um, the, the, the Dadam Rare administration told officials it wasn't important. Uh, we, we are reviving it because that's the only way we're going to reclaim our city and that's the only way we're going to deal with urban decay in partnership with the private sector through the, the city improvement districts, them adopting precincts and, and working with the city to revive um, our spaces. 
Now, let me go to the Field Band Foundation because I think that's the last question that was directed at me. This matter happened when I was MNC Health and Social Development. In fact, I participated in a Hawks investigation and um, I, I participated in the investigation as a witness. So I was actually never accused in the matter. And that, that my last interview, I think, with the Hawks must have been in 2018, 2019, I can't remember. And I've not heard back from them since. Even in the public protector report, you'll note that there were no findings against me. I do see politicians th trying to thumbsuck um, findings against me, but if the Hawks and the public protector both did not, then why, where would politicians find those um, findings from? Because I did participate in extensive and lengthy interviews, you know, and I provided all the information and all the background. As you know, the matter is now sub judicated, so I will speak to a point and I'll leave it to the courts to decide. But the matter is between uh, former Mayor Herman Mashaba and the public protector at, at the moment, and it is before the courts, and we need to allow that process to unfold. The grant itself was a discretionary grant in line with the Municipal Finance Management Act. It is provided for in the act for an executive mayor or a mayoral committee to issue such a grant. The only loophole that the public protector pointed out, and it was not an indictment on the administration of the time, was that in Johannesburg, in council, there is no process that has been developed internally to direct how service prof providers get identified for discretionary grants. That's a historic thing. And if we could, can go into history and look at all the discretionary grants that have been issued, you will find that it was really rather arbitrary as opposed to following a clearly defined process. And that was a systems and a process gap that the public protector identified and the city was meant to then address that going forward. Um, and that's really as far as I can go on that. Let, let's allow the court so if it was to a do their... Fund, man, it means a politician had the right to appoint. Does it mean that it was yourself or Mr. Mashaba who personally appointed them? It was a mayoral committee decision that made the decision to issue the discretionary grant. Some are saying you are using this this uh, subjudicate thing to block the motion from coming before council, whereas it doesn't affect you personally. How, how, how do you explain it? There are rules in council and motions must be subjected to those rules and one of the rules is that if the matter is before the courts it cannot serve in council in a motion and unfortunately um, the, uh, Speaker Colleen McLumellas as well as the ANC and the partners uh, completely disregarded that rule and yes we have a right to uphold the rules of council and we'll continue to do that. Okay thank you very much. I appreciate your tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> and for the absolute details, again, I expect to see you on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But when we come to when we come to to grant spending, if you remember uh, on budget speech day, after the debate and when the budget was approved, that there was an item that served on that same day that was called a special adjustment budget. And money had to be returned, grant money was returned from the city of Johannesburg back to province and national government because in the first two quarters money hadn't been spent on those grants. And we came in in the third quarter. So that happened anyway. And in the city of Johannesburg, and I would imagine in, in other municipalities, but I don't know that, there is a traditional project capex spend pattern that we call hockey stick. So in the first quarter, very little capex gets spent. In the second quarter, there's maybe a little more. In the third quarter, there's an increase in spend and then there's a flurry at in the final quarter. So. at the risk of being slightly facetious. If we had spent in that last quarter whatever hadn't been spent before, you would be sitting here accusing us of fiscal dumping. So there was no fiscal dumping under the multi-party government. We make sure that residents' money and grant 
funded money is spent properly, we get value for money, we make sure we do not overpay for anything. And so that, that final major spend that has been a frustration of mine in the six years that I have been a councillor in the city. And so that didn't happen. And that is why there was money, further grant money, that was not spent by the end of the year. And then the executive mayor has um, explained why it was that our request, we did request rollover, and our request for the rollover of that funding was denied. So having said what I've said, there are spend patterns that need to be looked at. There are that hockey stick spend needs to be addressed. And these are the things that we will be bringing to you to tell you what is our plan going forward in order to make sure that the money that we do receive is spent on service delivery optimally and that we do not spend more than we need to spend and that we do spend and that our spend and our budget are aligned. So those will come in detail to explain to you on Wednesday um, what we're doing that. With respect to the blocking of the short-term loan, absolutely yes, we have been watching the city's finances very closely for a number of months. And had October not happened, the DBSA loan would have served in October's council under our multi-party government with Vasco da Gama as the speaker. That would have happened. Why would we have waited until October? Well, it's a loan. And when you repay a loan, you've got to repay interest. So you won't take a loan out until as late as possible in order to minimize the interest that you have to pay back when you have to pay it back. So the shorter the term of the loan, the shorter, the, the least amount of interest you're going to pay. So we were in line, on time and ready. It would have served in October. No, it did not hit us by surprise. Yes, we did know we were going to have to come to council to ask for it. Um, but the illegal coup got in the way and right now the Speaker is obstructing the serving of that report into Council. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The contract, the field contract, were you not aware not, that was Not mine, not, not, got nothing to do with me. The, there is, if I can just, um, at a very high level, there is a, an investigation um, that is underway, and that's what informs the approach that we've decided to take, and um, <coughs> our report to Council it, uh, contrary to the Dada Morero administration that wanted to go ahead and award the contract irrespective of an investigation that's yet to be concluded before the end of this year, we were proposing a different approach that would ensure that service delivery is not interrupted, but at the same time we allow space for the investigation to be concluded before awarding um, a contract. And, and that's, that's, that's why they're blocking it effectively, because I, I believe they have an interest. In fact, their behavior suggests very strongly that they have an interest in this particular contract, but hopefully the law will, will, will take its course and will protect our citizens from this corruption that's unfolding. Um, Alex, I know you've been watching the water issue very closely. I think um, we all know that our dams and, and rivers are, are fairly full in terms of water levels. So, so the problem was never about the amount of water we have in our, in our natural systems. But the issue, in our opinion, has really got to do with purification and the pumping or, 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 or you know, transporting that water to um, our reservoirs and towers in Johannesburg water. Um, I don't want to be the spokesperson for Rainwater, they've got their own issues, but we certainly want to continue the, those offer of assistance and cooperation to say to Rainwater, whenever you need our services or our assistance in improving your programming, improving your infrastructure, we're there to assist. And um, I, I mean, this is what government should be about. We shouldn't say that uh, it's because it's not our problem, it's not on our end, then it's your fault to deal with. We'll be there to ensure that this problem is resolved for the benefit of our residents. Uh, in terms of our own water infrastructure, yes, we will not lie. 
Uh, there has been years of uh, neglect in terms of infrastructure investment. This is why this multi-party government invested, and I repeat what the, the mayor has said earlier on, you know, uh, hundreds of millions. Um, in fact, the number is 795 million towards water supply infrastructure, an additional 600 million for the sewer. Just in the last quarter, the three months of April to June, that when this multi-party government was in charge, or is in, still in charge, I beg your pardon, that uh, we replaced just under 70 kilometers of sewer pipes and over 100 kilometers of water pipes in the city of Johannesburg. Unfortunately, these infrastructure are, are underground. Our residents don't see the excitement of replacing water pipes, but you can imagine 100 kilometers is not a short distance. I mean, for that amount of work and investment and commitment made to our residents, it's a show to say that uh, we are here to resolve real issues with real solutions. Um, Alex, you mentioned that another problem about water restrictions is definitely water will always be a, a, a scarce uh, resource, it's valuable. Um, we can hope for rain, but we can't make rain yet. Well, not at least not in the city of Joburg. But uh, we will continue to ensure that um, uh, we will one encourage our residents to use water sparingly, but also wisely. Now, please don't waste water. If there's leaks in your household, please do fix them. When your toilets are leaking, don't ignore it. It will eventually build up, both in terms of your own water consumption cost and as a wastage for the city. And I think very importantly on on, on the. Uh, other aspect is that uh, you remember, you know, a few years back where Cape Town had the day zero situation. We certainly don't want to have that in the city of Joburg. In fact, the entire Gauteng. We looked at the um, water scarcity um, situation. We've now formulated a report that um, we will bring to MACOM. It is a document, a strategic document, residents to say this is how you should be using water. And uh, on the other front is that if we should be faced with a day 30, day 60 situation, we then have a backup plan as to say what we would do about it to avoid invert day zero. Um, there was a question on pick it up. Uh, what services? It's really the refuse collection services. Um, it is um, the procurement supply chain process where contracts in terms of um, fleets are involved. Um, we as politicians, we don't get involved in those uh, procurement processes, but we certainly will exercise oversight and ensure that the, the impact that is now created because of uh, the non-passing of the fleet contract is minimized. Um, I can't give you um, a time limit in terms of days, but I want to assure you that uh, by Monday morning, this problem would have been resolved. Um, certainly, I'll be working towards that um, and maybe a few hic gaps here and there in terms of concluding the new contract, but uh, we will not stop to find alternatives to ensure that the refuse will be collected. Uh, then the last question was to do with the um, the deadline on the partnership with the MRE. I firstly want to say that uh, you know we, we are very grateful. We appreciate the MRE mm -hmm. for coming on board, mm -hmm. wanting to assist the city of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Those uh, solar geyser uh, units are not cheap. Mm -hmm. um, but we think it certainly will go a very long way for mm -hmm. both the country in terms of saving energy and the city of Johannesburg uh, residents and organizations of receiving new infrastructure and uh, equipments to improve uh, lives. Uh, we haven't put a deadline on it, but I think uh, the, the, the question was that uh, have we got a deadline as to when this will be uh, rolled out? Uh, we want to do it by before the end of November. So as I've said earlier on, as soon as we get a letter of commitment, uh, DMRE, if you're watching, please give it to us very quickly. So the mayor and myself, we can go on a truck and come fetch those solar water geysers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have any closing remarks? Yes, um, to our residents, I just want you to know that the multi-party government is back on board. We may be a minority government now, but we 
are still as resolute that we need to focus on you, your needs. I know a lot of politics and noise is playing out in the background, but I want you to know that from next week, we will be starting our regional community engagements. We'll be coming into your areas. We'll be looking at what your issues are, your specific pressure points. We'll work with your councillors, with the regional directors, and we will bring all departments and entities to ensure that we fast track the resolution of the things that give you sleepless nights. We remain committed to you. Please do not allow allow the politics to, to, to give you anxiety. This government is committed to your well-being and to the rebuild and repair of Johannesburg. We need your help and your support. And those of you that have sent mes messages of encouragement and prayers, we're really grateful we're standing today because of your support. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the media. As you've heard, whilst we are facing some headwinds, the work of government does continue and will continue until the very end, which we anticipate being 2026. Thank you, Madam EM and MMCs.